Hey, what's up, Discovery? How are you guys doing today? You guys came about 15 minutes earlier, right? Some of you just rolling in right now and miss worship, but you'll learn, you'll learn next week, okay? We went to four services. The service starts at 9.30. I'm really stoked about the beginning of the series. If you're new to Discovery, we kind of we kind of teach in series here, and I really view the teaching series as journeys that we go on, and it's, it's just such a privilege to take you guys on the journey through God's Word into what He's saying to us, what is, what is the Holy Spirit saying to us in this season, and I'm so excited to jump into this unmasked season. For some of you, you've been um, maybe a Christian for a long time. For some of you, maybe you're, you're investigating faith. Maybe, maybe uh, you're, you're, you stepped in here and someone dragged you in here. I don't know. But I, I, I do know this, though, is that this message was meant for you. Like, no matter where you come from today and, and, and what's going on in your life and how long you've known God or have not known God, like what I'm going to be talking about today, it applies to you. I, bl- I believe God brought you here for a very specific reason. Here's the idea with this Unmasked series is that um, all of us have issues. Is that okay to admit in church? And it really is, you guys. It's a, we all have issues. We all have problems. We all have things that we are still working on in our life. We have, what, we have an other side. I, I, I call it the dark side, that we don't want nobody to know. We don't want nobody to see that part of my life. We don't want to see those issues are my real struggles, because if if they did, if they did, then they would think less of me. That's what we think. If they did, they would judge me. If they did, I wouldn't be accepted by them. I want you to think about, if you will, that one area that you don't want people to know. That one area that's masked, that's covered, that's hidden. And, and the problem is this, is that most of us actually spend more time trying to cover it up than we do actually trying to fix it or to do something about it. So we, so we put on and we cover up and, and we, we've been taught this, especially in church, we've been taught this. Religion has taught us to put on very, very well because what happens on Sunday? What happens when you go to church? You dress a little bit nicer. At least some of you did. Some, some of you did, did, did. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Come as you are, man. It's all good. You, but no, you, dress, well, you may dress a little bit light, nicer. You smile a little bit easier. Some of you brushed your teeth. Thank you so much for doing that this morning. Whatever you did, you got ready. You, kinda, you came on, and, and, and it's like you, 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 sometimes we're so easy to just put on. I believe if we were honest, some of you would admit, I'm a different person Monday through Saturday. Okay? Like, like in here, I, I, and it's not that I want to e- either. It's not that, and this is, I know, I know the sentiment. I know you guys. It's not that you want to. It's not that you want to be a different person. It's not that you want to have different habits or attitudes or reactions in life. It's just, it's just kind of, you become comfortable with the mask. You become so comfortable putting on that, that, that it's just, it's become like natural to you. The mask is part of you now that, that this is just the way it is. This is just the way it's, it's, it's going to be. And, and I'm, I've dreamed of a church that, that, kind of, you didn't have to be fake and phony. When we started Discovery, that was part of, that was like the dream. It was like, man, I dream of a church that, that you didn't have to put on, that you didn't have to be fake or phony, that you can be real in church, that you didn't have to play those, those, those religious games and act like you got it together when you know you got issues. And that's why when I talk to you guys, I don't talk to you as one who has it all figured out. I, I don't. I don't talk to you as one from a platform of like, Follow me, I'm, per- no, I got issues, and, and I share even some of my issues with you guys, and then I'm on this journey as well, and God is healing me, and he's, he's showing me, and he's guiding me as well, and I always dreamed of a church where that could actually happen, where we didn't have this issue, this problem of trying to hide it or disguise it all the time. And here's the key, here's the key kind of to this series, you guys. That this key thought that you, I want you to understand is that God cannot heal what you don't reveal. Okay? And it, it, let, me, let me say it this way. That the level of your healing will be at the level of your revealing. Okay? I'm going to break it down. I'm going to start rapping right now, dude. Come on. <laughs> Uh, and I know in, in teaching a message like this, in a series like this, and specifically even today's message, because the topic of, that we're dealing with, um, it, 
I, the sentiment for some of you, and I just hear me out, the sentiment for some of you either is, is either going to put up a wall or to push back. And what I'm going to ask you to do, like sometimes I do, and he just this for the next half hour or so, just give, give the Holy Spirit some room in your life to speak to you without any pushback, without erecting any walls, without, without t- you know, just, just the battling of thoughts in your mind. Just, just be open to what the Holy Spirit would have you say. Because some of you have gotten so comfortable, listen please, some of you have gotten so comfortable with the mask that you don't even know who's under the mask anymore. You don't even know why you're wearing it. You don't even know that it's actually there. You've actually started to claim the mask. You say things like, this is me. This is what I, this is who I am. This is what, this is my, this, and you've, you don't even know really what's behind that mask. And I am, I'm telling you, I've dreamed of a church that we didn't have to put on, fake it or be phony, but you could be real before, before your, your brothers, your sisters, before people and before God. Paul was this kind of person. The apostle Paul in the Bible was that kind of person. That's why I think I'm so drawn to him, to the apostle Paul, because he was just real. He was honest. He was kind of honest about his issues. He was honest about his life and his sin and kind of put out there like, look, I'm not perfect. And he kind of, he kind of said that often. He was honest to the people. In 2 Corinthians, he said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. It's kind of going to be a theme verse for our series. He says, we refuse to wear masks. Like, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to act like I got it going on when I know I have issues, when I know there's things I'm still, I'm still working on. I refuse to wear masks and play games. I'm not going to do it. Instead, we don't maneuver, he says, and manipulate behind the scenes, which is what some of us do. Instead of fixing it, we try to manipulate the situation. He says, rather, instead of all that, we keep everything we do and say out in the open. And so this, this is what we're doing in this series. We're bringing things out in the open, the whole truth on display. And the truth is there is this tendency, especially in church, to just put on. Just, can we just be honest, you guys? Can you be real with me in this series and, and especially today? There is a tendency in church to just put on and, 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 and I mean, you guys, let's, let's identify it. Let's work on it. Let's kind of unmask and let God do a work inside of us. In this series, I got four messages that are going to be, you know, it are going to be unmasking messages. And, and today's topic has to do, can't think with a lot of it, and to kick it off, the title of the message today is Unmasking My Emotional Wounds. You see, I think that, that some of us get so comfortable with those wounds, those hurts, those, those, the pain, you, uh, there's a scar that, that you have. I have a scar. When I first got this scar on my arm, I tried to cover it up. And some of you are, are, are trying to cover up the scars and the wounds and, and, you're, and, 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 and not really dealing with the pain and untreated pain. And it's causing this bitter root inside your life. You're covering up the wound. You're hiding it instead of healing it. And you can never heal what you hide. How cool would it be, you guys, if we didn't have to pretend anymore? I mean, how awesome would that be if I didn't have to, if I didn't have to put on, I didn't have to wear the mask, but I can, I, and here's, here's the, 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 the truth of it, you guys, is that there, we wear masks because we've bought into a lie. That's why we wear masks. We're not comfortable with what's behind the mask. We're not comfortable with, with, with what's there, but what is there, I'm telling you that, that the reason why you're wearing a mask today is because of some type of lie that you bought into that the enemy has told you. There was a wound that you never treated and you bought into a lie. Instead of actually treating it, you covered it up. We covered it up. So today what I want to do is I've kind of, I've done, what I've done is listed four key lies that we believe, four key negative statements that most people have at one time or another, have thought one or more of these statements. Here's the first one. Take some notes with me, you guys. Maybe you heard someone say this about you, or maybe these, you just kind of bought into this lie. Here it is. The first one is, you don't fit in. You don't fit in. You start buying into that, and you'll wear the mask. Or, or you don't belong here. Or you're, you're not one of us. You don't fit in. If you've ever heard that or experienced actions that lead toward that thought, if you're like most people, you'll slip into this um, mode of being what I call conformers. 
you'll end up being a conformer. Write that down. When you feel you don't fit in, it's very easy to become a conformer where, where you, try to, you, you, you try to make your actions live up to the perceived expectations of other people. There was a person in the Old Testament who was a great, he was the great conformer of the Old Testament who, who, who never felt like he lived up to the expectations that other people had on him. That was King Saul. King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15, 24, he said, I have sinned, like I have sins, he said. I have violated the Lord's command. Now, why did he do this? He says, I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them. In other words, I felt like I wasn't living up to their expectations, so I conformed my actions to what I thought they wanted. And a lot of us do that. Maybe, maybe in your childhood or high school years were similar to mine, where no matter how hard you tried, um, you felt like you really couldn't fit in or fit into the group that you wanted to fit into. Um, I don't know about how you guys grew up, but in, in elementary, like we were poor. We were very poor. Very poor. So my mom, God bless her, she tried. She tried to get me the clothes, but they weren't, you know, they weren't really the name brand, but they were almost the name brand. Do you know what I'm talking about? How many of you with me? You know, you ever wear those clothes? And they knew. This is why they, my mom, you know, she tried to get me heel figure and, and the, the, the flag's all crooked and stuff. They know, you know, I just, I, I try. And, and those aren't, jo- that's not Jordans. That's not Michael on that shoe. That is not Michael on that shoe. That was me. Mom was trying to help me out, but I just feel like, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't fit in. And then even in high school, even like, and my mom worked hard to provide for us. And she, she got, you know, her degree and became a nurse. And so when, by the time when I was in high school, she was like making up for it now. So, so now she could get us whatever we want. And we go school shopping and, and, and stuff. And so I know I shop at the real stores, you know, like JCPenney and stuff and Macy's and <laughs> go to the mall and not to the store down the, you know, on Niles or something. I was an East Side kid, okay? You get all the knockoffs. Like Adidas, you know, Adidas or whatever, <laughs> Jordans, you know, and even Jordans, those are Jordans. But went to the real stores, got some real clothes. But, but can I tell you something? That, it, that even though I, I had on the, the Ralph Lauren or the Polo or Hilfiger, I mean, they're probably not po- popular now, but they were then when I was a kid, okay? Even though I had it on, I still felt like inside, I don't fit in. I don't belong. Because, because although I put on the right clothes, Nothing changed on the inside. So I, might, I, I covered it up, but so I, my, those clothes were just a mask to me. They were just, they were just some, it, nothing really changed on the inside. So although I tried and I dealt with this, I struggled with this, that I don't fit in and I don't really belong here. And even though I kind of try to look the part inside, man, I just, I just don't feel like, you know, I fit in. And maybe, maybe you feel that. Maybe your house. Maybe the, you, you got, you're on the right side of town now. You're in the right house now, but, it, but, but still inside you feel like, I don't really belong here. I don't really fit in here. Why? Because, because that house is just a mask. You never really dealt with the internal issue, the belief that was wrong inside. Maybe, maybe it was the money you started chasing or the career now you started having and, and all these things that you're, that you're getting and you're putting on now and, and, and there, you still feel after all of it just don't fit in. Why? Because you never, it became a mask. You never dealt with the real issue that you feel like you don't belong. For some of you, it could be you morally conform. um, I can't tell you how many people conform. They compromise God's sexual standards, gave away their virginity for the hope of being accepted. They, or, they, or they did some drugs, or they drank alcohol, or they did something that they know they didn't really want to do, but when they were just crying out, please accept me. Please just, just you know, I want to be accepted. And what do grown-ups do? You grown-ups are no different either, okay? We're not. We're still doing the same thing. What do we do? We get in debt. That's what we do. We try, to, we try to buy things that we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like, and we conform. We conform to... That's what I, because why? Because I just feel like I don't fit in. That's what's behind the mask for some of us. Hey, here's, a, here's a second thing that might be behind the mask that we're wearing today, and that is this lie. You're not good enough. It's a lie of the devil, man. You're not, 
you're not good enough. Like no matter what, you'll never be good enough. Or you don't measure up. Or maybe you don't have what it takes. If you battle with this thought of not being good enough, you can easily slip into this mode of what, I, what I'm calling today uh, being a performer. You're a performer. And you know what? Oh, if you don't like me right now, you don't think I'm good enough, watch me. I'll win your love and approval. I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll try really hard. And you see a powerful example of this in Luke chapter 10 when a woman named Martha had Jesus over to her house. You can read it. It says, Martha opened her home to Jesus, and she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. You find out later in the story that that's actually exactly what Jesus wanted, just to, just to be in his presence, to sit at his feet. But in verse 40, we see that Martha missed the point entirely. The Bible said, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. You almost can read between the lines and see her logic, can't you? Well, Jesus is coming over my house. I gotta guess I got Jesus coming. So I gotta make sure the kids' toys are picked up. Gotta make sure the house is clean. Gotta make sure there's nothing out. The dishes are, and the, and the appetizers are out and everything because, because Jesus, Jesus is coming over and I want Jesus to accept me. I, want, I don't want him to judge me. I don't want him to think so. I, I want to be, accept. so you can almost see and hear her logic by this, that she needs to perform, that maybe then Jesus well, you almost can hear that mentality coming out there. And for many of you, you feel like you're not good enough, so you work, your, you work your tail off to prove it to someone, to somebody, or maybe even yourself. For many of you, it manifests like a, like a child trying to get a good grade still. And you know, like, like you can get a B. You can get a B, but you know that wasn't your best, and you beat yourself up like inside. It feels like an F because you did, it's not the best grade possible. Or maybe... It was sports for you, you know, that you had to be the best or you had to be the first chair in band or whatever it was you were performing. And then one day you grew up and you're still performing. You're still, you're performing for your boss. You're, try, you're performing for your supervisor, trying to please, trying to, trying to get acceptance. You're trying to be the perfect wife. You're trying to be the perfect mom. You're trying to be the perfect husband or the perfect provider, the perfect father. I know so many men who are trying to be the perfect provider, and all their, their kids want is not more things. They just want dad. They just want dad. We mask it and cover it up because we feel, I'm not good enough. Behind the mask, for some of us, that's how we feel. Here's another lie that we believe behind the mask, and that is, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy of love. You're not worthy of acceptance. Those who have been rejected often hear that voice, and they can believe this lie so easily. Those who have been abandoned often hear this voice. Those who have, who've had husbands or spouses walk out on them or cheat on them or, or kids that have had uh, of divorced parents think about this. They think like, what, what did I do? And what could I, what I do wrong? What could I have done better? And my parents could stay together. And you hear this voice that you're not, you're not worthy. If you start to buy into that lie, what you'll become, write this down, is a clinger. Not a Klingon, that's Star Trek. I'm talking about a clinger, okay? A clinger. That's different. Here's uh, John 4, verse 17, Jesus was dialoguing with a woman that could be classified as a stage five clinger, okay? Let me just, he just said, yeah, he said, look at this, John 4, 17, you're right when you say that you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you're now, you now have is not even your husband. Okay, this is very obvious that this woman was trying to find her meaning in men instead of trying to find her meaning in God's son. So she was a clinger looking for validation from people, just like so many of us today. Some of the most wonderful women are, I know are, are, you know, clinged on to some of the most god-awful men that we know. I mean, you know some, some, some relationships like that, hoping to make them better, and, and, and they're in constant dating cycles, Helping to make them better when the truth of the matter is you are in a sinking, you're sinking into a codependent relationship that you don't know, you don't even realize what it's going to do to your life unless you get rid of that, those emotional wounds and you discover, listen, who you are in Christ. You need to discover who you are in Christ. Someone asked me 
what is a, what, what's a clinger? What actually, how do I know? How do I know I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a clinger, Pastor? Well, if you've had more than two um, restraining orders filed against you, <laughs> chances are you're a clinger, okay? If you, uh, if you do the callback, chances are you're a clinger, okay? How many of you know what the callback is? You know what the callback? The, the callback is, is when you, I mean, you, you had a, you're on the phone, you had a good conversation, it was five or ten minutes with someone, it ended fine. But moments later, they call you back some moments later, and they say, hey, is everything okay between us? It just sounded funny when you said bye. Okay, you got emotional issues, okay? You may be a clinger, all right? <laughs> How many of you would say honestly that you've dealt with maybe feeling unworthy or unlovable, or you felt some of these issues and believe some of these lies? How many of you be honest and say, yep, I've thought some of those things. Yep, there's some honest people in the house today. Thank you, Jesus. Here's the last one that... Some of the lies that we believe behind the mask. Some of us have thought this, and this is dangerous. We think, we buy into the lie that we're stained. You're stained. You're unfixable. You're unrepairable. You're damaged goods. There, there's, you can't really, and, and because of that, you, you can't really do that. That's not for you now because you're stained. And so what do you do with a stain when you can't get it out or when you can't think it out? You cover it up. You, so, so you end up just trying to compensate and cover that up. And what happens is if you, if, you, if you buy into this lie, you're going to become what I'm calling a spectator. A spectator. Where, where you're not engaged in God's destiny for your life. You're not, actually, you're not actually a participator in God's plan. You're just a spectator. You're just a bystander in God's purpose and plan for your life because you bought into a lie that I am stained. Come on, somebody. Today, we need to sh- I mean, you know, shout out that shout. We need to shout out the stain. There's a, that's a lie of the enemy in Jesus' name that you are not stained. But when you buy into that, this is, this is the effect. And what do spectators do, by the way? Not only do you not run your race, but what do spectators do? They spectate. Okay? They spectate on the race. So what happens is when you're, when you're consumed with guilt and shame in your own stain, not only are you a bystander to your own destiny, but you start spectating on everyone else's journey. I uh, start judging them and looking at them and pointing fingers at them all over the place. Why? It's all because you're covering up your own shame, your own guilt, throwing shade over here because of the hurt I have and the wound that I never healed. Philippians chapter 3 says this. Again, Paul, I love it. He says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. I'm not, he said. It ain't going to happen. Like even when I think I deal with these issues and I get them under control, I get them under control and then the thought comes again. Then the enemy lies to me again and I need to bring it into subjection of the, in, into the name of Christ again. Man, I haven't reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I haven't achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, and here's what we need to focus on. Forgetting what is past. Forgetting what is behind you and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race. Some of you stop running the race because you bought into this lie that you were stained, that you were damaged, that it wasn't for you. Paul says, uh uh uh, I forget what is behind. I press on to what is ahead to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Man, I want today in Jesus, with the help of God and the help of the Holy Spirit, for every one of us to remove, take off the mask that we're wearing, the hiding those feelings of guilt and shame and regret and the unworthy and all those emotional wounds and the lies that we've believed. And today, to, to put on the truth of God's word. Like, like that's what I've been praying for all week, that God not, not only would bring revelation, because some of you d- didn't even know until today when God, when the Holy Spirit brought revelation that this was the lie behind the mask behind a lot of your problems, like your relational problems, your, your, your career problems problems, your spiritual issues, the challenges, the, the conflict. Actually, the, the genesis of that was because there was a lie that you believed. And, it, it, and, and every now and then, it just, because of the challenge of the circumstance, that triggers and it comes out and you say, whoa, where did that, where did that come from? And, and then, but then you just mask it up again. But then a crisis will happen, a challenge, and then, and, then, and then something cuts you to the core because of a lie you believe. And then you get all, oh, where did that come from? And then you co- cover it back up. If, if you are going to be truly healed, please, you, you, 
God can't heal what you don't reveal. We need to take off the mask. The level of the healing will be dependent upon the level of the revealing. So in order for you to truly be healed, I need today for you to buy into a different truth. I need for you to, to just understand, to buy into, uh, to, to expose the lie of the enemy, but to buy into a different reality today. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. It's not in your notes, but up here on the screen. I need you to buy into this church so you can be healed, so you can be free. And that is you are not who others say you are. You're not even who you say you are or who you think you are. You are who God, who Christ says you are. That's the truth. That's the reality. That's what you need to buy into. That's why you can take off the mask and be comfortable with who you are. Because you're not who they... Not, some of you actually have people say these actual things to you, and it's a repeating voice in you. Some of you, you said it to yourself, and you disqualify yourself. Others, you use it a direct attack of the enemy. Spiritual warfare. I'm telling you, it's a lie of the enemy. You are not who others say you are. You are not who others think you are. You are who Christ says you are. I have four truths for you today of who you are in Christ, because what we're talking about here, in order to be truly healed from the emotional wounds, we need to, we need to know who you are in Christ. Like The reason why you're masking it up is because you don't know your real identity. You're not comfortable with who you are. Or you don't know who you are. It's actually an identity issue. I have four truths about who you are in Christ I want to give you today. There's a lot of them. I, I, did, I did a lot of research, but these are the four ones that I believe today will help us unmask and heal the emotional wounds that we've kind of let fester. Look at this scripture. Let me, let, me, let me use this one here to kind of kick off the, who we are in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Do you realize what that just said right there, you guys? That says that, that in Christ, like every open heaven, every blessing, every everything that God has to offer, he's giving to you. Every spiritual blessing, where? In Christ. I love that phrase, in Christ. It comes from the, the, the Greek, en Christos. It means on, in, or through Christ. En Christos. Who are you? En Christos. Christos, four truths I want, to, I want to give you today. I looked up all the verses that, that talks about who we are in Christ. The first one is this. Number one, in Christ, you need to understand that in Christ, I am accepted. I am accepted. The truth is Jesus accepts you, and his acceptance is not based on your performance at all. It's not. In, 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 in fact, you may have received Christ and you may have accepted Jesus into your life, but do you realize you were only able to do that because Jesus first accepted you? Like he accepted you. You don't even earn his acceptance. You can't earn it. You can't prove yourself to him. Ephesians 1.6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, to which he has made us, look at this, accepted. He made us accepted. In Christ. I mean, we need, we need to stop thinking that we have this unpleasable God that I just need to measure up to. I need to be a good boy or I need to be a good girl. I got to make the right decisions, do the right things in order to be accepted. No, God through Jesus Christ has already accepted you. That's good news. Look, and here's the problem. If you don't know that's your identity, you're going to wander through life looking for acceptance in the wrong places. You're, you're, you're going to try to find acceptance. And when it's not given to you, because it will always fall short, because nothing else will ever be able to give to you what was reserved for God alone to give you. You're going to search for acceptance, and it's going to fail you. And then you're going to be crushed again and, and wounded again emotionally. But when you know <laughs> that you know in Christ I am accepted. I can stand confident in that. And it doesn't matter really what you think about me or what you think about me of the billions of people on this planet Earth. If a few people don't like me, I don't care. I'm accepted in Christ. Come on, somebody. That is good news. The Bible teaches us, not in your notes, but in Psalm 27, it says, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Some of you actually have had a parent that did not accept you. And this is why you have this issue here, this, that, that you feel unworthy. I need, you need to know today. Look, if we're going to be free, if we're going to heal the emotional wounds, you need to know that in Christ, I'm accepted. Will you say that with me together? Ready? One, two, three. In Christ, 
I am accepted. Man, that's a truth. That's your identity. That's who you are in Christ. Here's number two. In Christ, I am forgiven. In Christ, I am forgiven. Look what the scripture says about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is what? If anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christos, he says, he, say it out loud. Like it, he says he is a new creation. Come on, the old is gone. The new has come. Look, if you're in Christ, you've been forgiven. The old filth, the old sin, the old, it's like it never happened. The Bible says it's cast in the sea of forgetfulness. Like it is gone. You are a brand new creation. Look, do you know that? Like when you are in Christ and you accepted Jesus, like you didn't become a better you. You didn't become a more improved version of you. You didn't adopt a new mo model of living that's going to help your life or a new moralistic code that'll make your life better. That's not what happened. What happened is you became a brand new creation in Christ. In Christ, you were forgiven and you, were, you are brand new. See, the problem is we, we can, God has forgiven us, but oftentimes we have, we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. And that's where the, the trouble comes in. And, and man, you need, a, you need a new revelation of forgiveness, child of God. You really do. I, some time ago, one of my kids, they, uh, they did something they shouldn't have did. They made a decision they shouldn't have made. And I'm not going to tell you which kid or anything like that, but I'm just going to, because they're, they're still young. When they're older and out and, and I get their permission, I'll tell you more about it. But I just, they just did something they shouldn't do and, and, and kind of broke mom and dad's heart a little bit. And and so we had to have some corrective conversations, some discipline. There were some consequences and things like that, and do what parents do. Um, but my child came to me at one point in this, just this journey, and, and with tears in my kid's eyes, I saw the brokenness. And he said, Dad, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? And that my heart broke. I, I got a glimpse of the father's heart, that he's drawn towards his kids. He's, he's, he, he is repelled by your brokenness. He's drawn. And I, and I told my child, I said, of course I forgive you. Of course I do. I love you. And, and, and can I tell you something? We have never brought it up to my child ever again. Never brought the, never, never like, remember when you did, never hung it over my child's head ever again. Now, we didn't just sweep it under the carpet and go, oh, let's just pretend it. No, we dealt with it. We talked about it. There was consequences. We walked it out. We, we reconciled it, it all. But, but we, I just got a revelation of God's forgiveness. And some of you need a deeper understanding of the forgiveness of God that in Christ, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if it happened post Jesus or pre Jesus. In Christ, you are forgiven. That is your identity in Christ. And if you don't believe that, you'll end up starting to try to live your life proving yourself to him. And you'll wear the mask. You'll put it back on if you don't know. In Christ, I am forgiven. Come on, will you say that out loud with me, guys? In Christ, I am forgiven. That's the truth. I want you to buy in to some new truths today of who Jesus is and who you are in Christ. Here's the third one, you guys. The third one is that in Christ, I am secure. In Christ, I am secure. Look at the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Listen to the security of this verse. I love it. He says, now it is God who makes, he makes both us and you. Like, he makes us. Do what? He makes us stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He said, "As look at the, look at this." He said, "His seal of ownership." Listen to the security of this. He put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit, and what is that deposit doing? Guaranteeing what is to come. See, whenever I feel insecure, and whenever you feel those negative voices, remember you are secure not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. You are secure because you are in. Christ, and because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you, you are secure because you have been sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Man, I'm telling you, this is this. Whenever you hear this lie, you need to let me let me give you an example of this. 
a while ago, I went to my pastor's church, Visalia First Assembly, Pastor Mike Robertson, love him to death. Some of you guys know him. But when I go there, um, he just lo- he, he loves to treat me well. And when I went, he had one of his pastors give me this badge that said all access on it. He's a, it was a big church. It said all access on, on the badge. And I felt, I, felt so, I felt like a big shot. Can I tell you that? I was like, yeah, like I can go anywhere. Where am I going to go? Where can I? I, want, I went backstage. I was supposed to go backstage. But I went back there, and he said, look, you're going to go over here, and, and I'm going to meet you there. So I went back there. One of the guys was like, hey, hey, you're not supposed to be back here. I'm like, what, excuse me? Do you know me? You know me? Like, uh, I belong. Like, it just, it just gave me this, 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 I wanted to, like, venture out. Can I tell you something? Like, this is your full access verse in the Bible. This is your all access to the throne room of God says, this says who you are, that you are secure in Christ, that you are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony, that greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. And it doesn't matter what others think about you. What matters is what Christ thinks about you. You have full access to every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. You tell the lies of the enemy to be quiet. Quiet, I am secure in Christ. That is who you are. That is your identity. You are secure in Christ. Look at this, Romans 8, 38, 39. I love this. For I am convinced, and I hope to convince you today. I hope the Holy Spirit convinces you of the truth today. Of what? Man, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height or depth, or anything in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is where? In Christ Jesus our Lord. I am, nothing is going to take me out of God's grace and his presence. I am secure in Christ. Say it with me, guys. In Christ, I am secure. That's who you are. And that's why you can take off the mask. Here's the last truth, what the Bible says about your identity, and that is in Christ, I am free. I am free. That is who you are in Christ. That is, that is, that is the claim that God has on your soul and spirit. And the world defines freedom very differently than Christ defines. The world defines freedom as like, I get to say what I want, do what I want. No one gets to tell me what I do, what I can and can't do. The, the world defines freedom very selfishly, totally selfishly. But the Bible says that the only way to true freedom is in Christ. It's in Christ. John chapter 8. Look at it, it says, so if the sun does what? If the sun sets you free, you'll be what? You'll be free indeed. Real freedom is the freedom of fear, the freedom of guilt, the freedom of shame, the freedom of death, of bitterness. You're free to quit pretending because you're free to be yourself. That's what real freedom is. How do you get rid of all those kinds of fears and those masks? I'll tell you, by letting God love you. By letting God love you. Do you know how much God loves you? Like he loves you. No, 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 no. The, the real you. The one behind the mask with those issues. The one behind the mask with those wounds and those hurts and that pain and that past. That, that person, that person, God loves you. He loves the real you. And when you realize how much God loves you, you begin to live in true freedom. In Christ, you are absolutely and completely free. See, when Jesus sets you free, he sets you free from the past. He sets you free from the hurt. You're free from the negative words spoken into your life. You're free from the lies that continue to haunt you. You're free from the addictions that continue to trap you. You are free from the baggage that slows you down. You are free in Christ. You're free to be everything that he created you to be. In Christ, that is who you are. You are not stained. You are not marked. You are not marred. You are the righteousness of Christ. Come on, will you say it with me, guys? Say that with me. In Christ, I am. Come on. In Christ, that's who you are. Romans 8, 1. Therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are where? In Christ. Go ahead and bow your heads with me, you guys, all across this worship center been praying for you all week that God would bring the people here who he wanted here to reveal truth to.